Tonight, a Larry Barker investigation takes us inside a secret museum with a vast collection of historic relics. But don't plan on visiting. You see, it's tucked away in an obsolete, rundown Albuquerque building that's always locked. Even though state lawmakers earmarked hundreds of thousands of dollars, the museum's collection is strictly off limits. Here's Larry's report, The Stealth Museum. You ever experienced anything like this before? Never. You know, in all my years with uh, in state government, federal government, and local government, um, never. This is the first time. It's an antiquated building hidden away in Albuquerque's Northwest Warehouse District. These World War II era corrugated steel Quonset huts house a museum the likes of which you have never seen. Welcome to the New Mexico Museum of Military History. Never heard of it? Well, that's because the privately owned museum collection is closed to the public. In fact, despite financial support from Albuquerque, Rio Rancho, the National Guard, and the state legislature, the Stealth Museum has no phone, no signs, no visiting hours, it's not listed in tourist brochures, and the door is always locked. Now, you would expect a military museum to look something like this. But this museum is different. Take a peek inside, and the first thing to hit you will be clutter and disarray. You see, this collection is less a museum and more a vast hodgepodge of military memorabilia, including trucks, jeeps, trailers, ambulances, motorcycles, parts, uniforms, hats, ribbons, ammo boxes, and miscellaneous papers. The core of the museum's collection are scores of vehicles that once saw service in far-flung places across the globe. Some are in working condition, some not. The assemblage is owned by a nonprofit group called the New Mexico Museum of military history. The World War II generation is all but gone. Greg Hart serves on the museum board. This is what they took and fought a war with. And we'd like to, to preserve it here in New Mexico for future generations. Faced with the challenge of owning military equipment with no place to display it, the museum sought public funding for a building to showcase its collection. State lawmakers chipped in $830,000, and the city of Rio Rancho offered to donate five acres of land for a museum complex. But those commitments turned into just another expensive government boondoggle. You see, the New Mexico Military History Museum was a project that could have been, but never was. In 2006, the legislature appropriated $100,000 for architects to design a 76,000 square foot museum complete with exhibit halls, storage areas, and a gift shop. However, after the organization failed to come up with $8 million to cover construction costs, the architectural plans were discarded. In fact, the Military History Museum has lost more than $700,000 in state appropriations because the nonprofit group could not meet New Mexico funding deadlines. Meanwhile, the National Guard helped out by allowing the museum to temporarily store vehicles at the Rio Rancho Armory. However, the nonprofit wore out its welcome after temporary storage stretched into almost 20 years. Because it had breached its agreement, the museum was directed to remove all its equipment from the armory. Many of the historic vehicles have since lost their value after being stored for years unprotected from the elements. In 06, the city of Albuquerque agreed to store the private collection in these twin warehouses. In exchange for rent-free use of city property, the museum agreed to display memorabilia in parades and other events 
for the benefit of the public. When the city leases its property to be used by a private entity, what is the most important aspect of that? Bottom line, Larry, there has to be a benefit to the general public when we lease that property out. Pat Montoya heads up Albuquerque's municipal development. Today, what is the public benefit to the lease of city property to the Museum of Military History? Larry, there, in my opinion, there is no benefit to the general public only because that facility is not open to the public. It was only after the lease was signed that city officials discovered the Military History Organization is a museum in name only. Is there a complete inventory of all the items in the New Mexico Museum of Military History collection? Not that I'm aware of. How do you know what you have in your collection if you don't have an inventory? It's a good question. In fact, the nonprofit organization has packed the warehouse with so much military stuff, it can't keep track of it all. Is there any organization here to the collection here in the warehouse? The short answer is no. Now, the museum did a good job accumulating old military relics, but a poor job managing the collection. For example, no one with the organization is sure just how many vehicles are in the collection. All the records are missing. We had titles on everything that we uh, had in the, in the collection at one time, but they have all disappeared. That's a problem, right? Very much so, yes. The museum generates a little income by loaning vehicles to Hollywood productions like Oppenheimer, but it's just not enough plagued with a dwindling membership, shoddy paperwork, disorganization, and dependency on a small yet dedicated group of volunteers like 89-year-old Doyle Caton, the museum is unable to meet its obligations. Today, the museum is not in compliance with uh, the city of Albuquerque's lease. The intent by this group was, uh, they intended well, however, for a, a number of reasons, they just weren't able to comply. The museum ignored requests for annual reports, vehicle titles, or insurance coverage. However, rather than enforce the rules, city officials simply looked the other way. That was three years ago. The city was at fault here. This one fell through the cracks and we just, we did not enforce the policy or the procedures or what was identified in the lease. In September, the museum was given another deadline to comply. It did not. In October, city inspectors cited the organization for fire code violations. There was discussions uh, within city government that they were completely out of compliance and that we needed to hold them accountable since they were not going to be able to comply and it was pretty evident at that point in time the decision was made giving them the 90-day notice that they had to vacate the property. In January, the museum moved out and relocated its vast collection to private property. This is very unusual. This is really, in my five years here, this is the first time that we've had to deal with an organization where we've actually evicted them. What does the future look like for the New Mexico Museum of Military History? There's a pretty black cloud over, over top of it right now. Last week, the museum's board made it official. The nonprofit organization confirms it has decided to call it quits, disband, and transfer its entire historic military collection to another nonprofit.